So I'm out in the S600, actually going to see some uh, cars at a classic auction, which is on in a couple of weeks. But just going to have a look at them uh, before the auction. And today, things are going well in the S600. So I've had a few issues, some of which I said about in my uh, previous review video, which you can uh, which you can see. I'll link here. Uh, but actually, there's been quite a host of problems over this car you know it's a, it's, a, it's a funny one because some of them come and go uh, some of them seem to get worse and some of them uh, go away and never come back so you know I've had quite a few niggles with this car but as I say today's a good day because quite a lot of the problems have gone so um, where to start the W220 era Mercedes S-Class is fairly notorious uh, for having quite a lot of issues. Electrical gremlins, problems with the ABC, uh, suspension system, etc. And of course it's the age of car now, uh, I think they made these up to 2006 uh, in the UK. This is 2003, so 21 years old now. But they, I, I think they started out in was it maybe 1998, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Um, yeah, so they're fairly old technology. They came with a lot of what at the time was cutting edge electric, uh, electrical systems and technology. And of course, those are just prone to going wrong over the years. And some of the fixes are stupidly expensive, really. Um, and of course, you've got a V12 bi-turbo bi engine. It's very rare to get a V12 that is cheap to, to service and maintain and to fix if there are any problems. So, Maybe I'll start with some of the more minor issues. Uh, a couple uh, which I'll show you from outside. So in addition to a little bit of damage, which I knew about when I bought it, on the wheel arch there, a bit of scrape there, some minor bubbling on the roof here, and a tiny bit of rust. You may be able to see the other side. Nothing terrible, but a bit, bit of a pig to fix. Uh, and then this bit, as you can probably just about see, maybe, here we go, uh, is loose and vibrates around. Uh, so I need to tie that back on. It's become detached, obviously, uh, so it's kind of redundant, but uh, yeah, another slight issue. And then on the inside, so there's a couple of issues that the dynamic seats have never worked. I've actually not really looked into it. I, I think it could be, I, I can't remember what the name of the pump um, that's likely to be the culprit here. I've not looked into it because it's not something I'm particularly bothered about. It'd be nice to have them working, obviously, but um, yeah, I... I not had the time, energy, and probably don't want to spend the money on getting that fixed. The trouble is with this era of Mercedes, it feels sometimes like uh, you're chasing something, no one quite knows what the issue is, uh, or they think they do, and it turns out to be something totally different. So you can chase your tail and spend a lot of money trying to diagnose these problems. Not, not many people actually know these cars really inside out, and, and, and that well is... Um, my, my opinion and my experience. <clears throat> I certainly don't, there's some good advice on forums etc but even when it comes to um, you know mechanics, even mechanics don't seem to know the ins and outs of these cars necessarily that well. Uh, so that was one issue, as I say quite minor. I had a central locking issue uh, where the fob didn't seem to unlock the doors uh, it did immediately after a journey, but then seemed to fail to do so if you left the car standing for a while. Uh, so I thought this possibly down to battery drain. And you know what, it did seem a bit better when I kept the battery on trickle charge. But then it just sporadically uh, happens. It'll work some days, not the others. I wonder if the, the button on the fob is a bit old and worn, 21 years old, but... Um, Sometimes it seems to work when you press it in particular ways and sometimes not. I don't think it is the fob. I checked the infrared is working and the battery is fine. Um, whether or not there is a you know, slight 
uh, issue with the, with the actual button. I don't know. It doesn't appear to be that though. Um, and then I think is it the, the PSC pump toy? I believe it's the same system that does the soft closed doors that also does the central locking. You know, I, I haven't got a problem with that, I'm fairly sure, because the button here to uh, lock and unlock centrally the doors, as you can see, oh, that's unlocked them, lock them, works fine. The soft closed doors still work perfectly, so it's not that. Uh, recently it's been working pretty well, but then I came to unlock it today and it wouldn't unlock with the fob, even though it's been working well for, for some time. So that is still a bit of a mystery. I can always unlock it, of course, with the, with the key. It sets the alarm off, I put the key in the ignition, all is good. So again, uh, a niggle rather than a major problem. I thought I got it solved, but uh, obviously not. I mentioned the battery drain problem. I think it might have been linked to the fridge. I now keep that off and it all seems fine. And then uh, I had this, as I described in my review video, a kind of bearing type noise coming from the engine bay. Um, couldn't work out where it was coming from. To me it sounded like a, like a resonance of vibration um, and I wondered if it was something loose in the en engine bay. I took off the engine cover um, tried mucking around with a few things in there, thinking it was something, something to do with that. Uh, I couldn't diagnose it, couldn't find where it's coming from. Uh, so I took it to, to the garage I used. I've used them for years for my uh, Mercedes E63 AMG. Um, good guys. They said it was uh, the ABC pump, even though that had actually been changed about a year or so beforehand. Uh, so I changed the ABC pump. I actually bought a refurb one. Um, they, they fitted that and I had exactly the same noise, exactly the same rev ranges, etc. It was still there just as before. So uh, the garage claimed it was just the ABC pump, the new ABC pump for malfunctioning the same way, but I'm, I do not buy that. You know, the, the chances of it making exactly the same noise and exactly the same rev range straight away like that are very slim in my opinion. Anyway, we came to an agreement over that in the end. But it, 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 eventually I, I wanted to try and find someone who actually knows a bit more about the ABC system and in particular these what are fairly rare V12 uh, Mercedes. So I found someone through to one of the forums that I'm on, Mercedes forums that I'm on. He owns a garage, uh, really Great guy, really nice guy, very um, forthcoming with sharing his knowledge. I drove a long way actually down, down to his garage to get him to have a look at this. Um, and yeah, so by then I had another couple of issues that I wanted him to look at. So a bit of a brake judder, only under very hard braking, otherwise not noticeable. Um, and also, again, barely ever noticeable, but sometimes a kind of big thump from the from the rear of the car when you went down a particularly nasty bump. I've only noticed this like a few times ever, ever but I thought I'd mention it when I went down there. So he had a look over the car, uh, he said yeah you, uh, your discs are, are screwed basically so new pads and discs needed. Um, what else? So he said the thump was actually a, a rear subframe push which is a really big job actually to change in an expensive one and I'll go into some of the costs later of how this mounts up. Um, he does not think it was the ABC pump but he had a look at the ABC piping which had been totally redone uh, maybe two years ago and it cost him you know, three grand or something for this car and he said it was a total mess, a total nightmare. Uh, and then, but he said that the ABC pump, the noise was not coming from there, however, one of the noises was this. And so one of the noises from this vibration when I when I took it down uh, to the garage was actually this, sitting under the heat shield. Uh, and obviously vibrating at particular edge range. So how, who's left this? I've got no idea. And how long it's been there? I've no idea. Uh, but that was quite an interesting find. So that was one of the noises gone. Then there still persisted another noise which was this kind of bearing type noise I, I described. He thought it was the idler pulley on the engine and suggested changing that. So 
Uh, I was really happy then. I thought it's brilliant. I've finally found the root cause from someone who knows what they're talking about. I got the idler pulley changed at the garage and the noise is still there. I, at first I thought it had gone. It kind of comes and goes a bit, but no, it's still there. So really frustrated. I don't know what this is. Um, it's bloody annoying is all I can say. So then the other issue that I also uh, described in, in my review was the fact that I had this uh, thump in the gearbox and it got stuck in gear then. So, you know, it used to do this sporadically. I had it a few times. Uh, it would go into limp mode, usually under hard acceleration. Effectively, it's almost like a slip and a thump and then got stuck in gear and in limp mode, you'd have to turn off the engine, restart, and reset and be okay. It did it a handful of times. I got the gearbox fluid uh, changed, uh, the filter obviously, that's, that made the problem much, much better. I hardly ever had it, but I still did have it a couple of times. And, um, you know, from what I've read about it, it did seem likely it was the speed sensor, um, the plate of the, on, on the gearbox uh, that has the speed sensor probably needed changing. I should have done it at the same time. My local garage, they didn't want to do it. Um, I should have known better, really, and, and done that. So taking it down to this guy who looked at the AC pump, he said, yeah, that's that's the issue. You need to get that sorted. Now, I had a, uh, th this was still persisting. I, I haven't been back to him to get that done yet, but then driving it quite slowly, cruising around, and I got a big thump as it changed gears, and then it was like a properly big thump this time, uh, and stuck in limp mode, stuck in gear. And this time, turning it off, restarting the engine did not help. Um, and Further to that, actually, when you when you started it up, you went from park into reverse, a huge thump, and a big thump again into drive, and it was like, oh, this sounds horrible, um, you know, catastrophically bad. It would drive, it would be stuck in the one gear, um, but you could drive it, and actually, when you changed between reverse, park, neutral, etc., as, as the, I presume as the fluids warmed up, the thump got much less and wasn't that bad, but still stuck in limp mode. Uh, so really pissed off, thinking what I should be doing about this and uh, how much I didn't want to spend on getting it sorted. And then, uh, you know, not really driving it, obviously, because of that. Got back in it, you know, I, I did a few miles just to keep it ticking over. And then got back in it quite a quite a lot of weeks, a couple of months later or something, and miraculously the gearbox now as smooth as ever, as if nothing had happened. Um, so very strange. I, you know, obviously I think it probably is the speed sensor. Quite why it is now working fine, I've no idea. Um, I did disconnect the battery at that time because I got locked out and couldn't couldn't open it. Uh, and I, I, I think I'd already tried that, but, but perhaps that reset has, has reset it, at least for the time being. I obviously don't think that's a, a kind of solving of the problem, if you like. Um, you know, I think there's a serious issue, and I think it is the speed sensor. So that's uh, another one, another one for the another day. So yeah, when I took it down to, to, to this guy who knows these cars, these V12s inside out, he had a look over the whole car. Um, he also said, as I, as I mentioned, uh, there was some minor oil leaks. So, so the parts for the um, for the brake discs and pads uh, for the speed sensor, gearbox oil change, for fixing the rear subframe mount. Oh, and he also said for the belt tensioner. Also a right rear strut was needed which was actually probably part of the cause problem, cause of this occasional thump that I had over big potholes. That was a 1500 part to start with but the parts just for that uh, came to 4200 so 4200 pounds. I imagine all of that work would be two days uh, I'm guessing in labour um, particularly the rear suffering mount uh, yeah that's going to be at least two days isn't it the gearbox uh, job is a fairly big one but let's say it was two days uh, you're then talking another you know, 1500 to 2000 pounds so let's say that bill comes in at roughly 4000 parts roughly 2000 labour about 6000 pounds now on top of that he said um, 
the ABC pump. Now, bear in mind, I've already had the uh, the pump changed recently. Uh, he, he said the pipe work was so bad that he thought, with the amount of labour it would take to correct that, he'd probably lo be looking at around a three grand job. However, he did also say it was so bad he didn't want any part of it. Um, so, yeah, that's not not good. Um, so whilst he was there, he, there's a, he said there's also a couple of minor engine leaks. Uh, he said the engine needs work. He'd just done uh, done some work on one of these to get the engine sorted for someone else on exactly the same car. That was a seven grand bill. So you know to get this car back uh, to back to top notch order, you're talking the, the, the six grand for the kind of basic parts. Um, the, the basic things that are essential to get done, another three grand for the ABC system, another seven grand to sort out all the engine foibles, let's call them. Um, so that's 16,000 uh, pounds. You know, I've bought this car for I don't know, something like 5,000 something, so it's crazy, right? Now, I've probably bought a lemon, fair enough. Um, how much of this is down to the um, you know, the W220 just being not a great S series and, a, and now at 21 years old these things start to go I don't know versus how much it is I've just bought a crap car um, probably the latter but interested to know any experiences of, that people have had that are similar to mine uh, it's not a happy story so I haven't quite yet worked out what I'm going to do yet um, I don't think I'm going to be spending 16 grand on it, put it that way. Uh, so yeah, I've got a bit of thinking to do. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, which seems, which seems minor now, the uh, airbag light comes on. It came on since I got it. I knew about it when I got it. I think it's a sensor or a wiring fault. Um, I got it sorted for the MOT when I had that done on it, uh, but the light came back on within a couple of weeks and remains on. It's To me, it's no issue. Uh, you can reset the warning when you start up the engine, but that's another thing. So, uh, yeah, it's not really a happy story for this car. Um, like I said in my review video, I really want to like this car, but I really struggle, and this really just makes it impossible. So I'm going to have to think about what I do with the car. Um, you know, I don't really want to keep it running it for too long with all these problems and potentially exacerbate ones that are already there, create new problems, etc. Equally, I don't want to spend 16 plus grand on getting it fully sorted. Uh, you know, e e even the middle ground of getting some of the things sorted is still, you know, possibly a five figure sum over 10,000 um, pounds. So, yeah, not great news. Um, and, you know, I should really know better. Buying a 21-year-old S-Class um, that's a V12 by Turbo, all the kind of complex systems uh, and, and problems that these have, um, you know, it's it's kind of comes with the territory. So I have to say I'm not that surprised. I should say that when I bought this, you know, I, I, I was aware of all these, or a lot of the potential issues. Uh, and I thought I was choosing wisely. This car had had the AB system totally, ABC system totally redone a, a couple of years or, or less before I bought it. One of the other major and very expensive problems on these is, is the coil packs. It had had those replaced. Again, an expensive job. And then I thought, well, those are the two biggest issues with these. Um, it, it's got a good service record. You know, something like. Um, 11 service stamps plus it's been off the road for three years so um, you know it was reasonably good it had quite a lot spent on it you know ceramic coated and all this kind of stuff in recent years so uh, I thought I was being relatively sensible but my conclusion is there is no sensible when you're buying a car like this and you never know what huge builds around the corner so yes maybe I'll build a lemon you know was it brave or stupid to buy this car? Uh, I think it was brave. I also think it was stupid. Um, 
and you know probably a lesson learned here that even when you think you're getting a good one you never really know what's around the corner and the potential bills are large um, so yeah mistake I hold my hand up there we go that's life uh, I move on I think what to do with this car um, and yeah the chart car journeys go on well thanks for watching uh, I'd be really interested to know of any experiences similar experiences um, that people have had with, with these cars or similar uh, thanks for watching